Hello and welcome to video call with Django. In this video, we'll create a simple video call system using Django channels and WebRTC. Let's get started. I have already prepared the code, so we'll go through the code. But first, let's check the demo. Our service is running on port 8000. Now we can log in. Let's log in as RAM here. Let's log in as Sita here. So uh, RAM can call Sita. And Sita can answer it. Hello. There is no way to hang up, so let's replace it. Okay, now since we have passed the demo, let's go back to the board. I have a simple simple Django project with a single application, single app called call to call. And in the call I have implemented, we have implemented the Django channels. Okay. That's it. Now let's talk about WebRTC. Uh, WebRTC is the technology that allow that allow web application to capture audio and video from the browser within the browser and and WebRTC allow communication between two browsers without requiring any intermediary okay so WebRTC is a peer-to-peer -peer network but we need some form of server to pass some initial information that's called signaling the signaling process signaling server have to pass three three messages okay there is the offer the answer and the ic candidate okay so here in the django channels we'll simply transfer these three messages it will transfer the offer the answer and the ic candidate okay now let's go through the code oh, we have we have simple template here for for our call application it is a plain java plain html code and we have a javascript code so let's go through this again so whenever you use user enter the web page it will so simple this structure and ask the user to provide his name and login so we'll use the name as identifier <laughs> when the user login will simply whenever the user login will simply create create the Call the connect socket method. The connect socket method will will create a web socket connection. It will create the web socket connection to the consumer. So to the WS comma slash call. So uh, the WS slash call request will goes to the consumer. And once the connect once the connection is established, once the connection is established, the web socket will send the Data will send a event type as login and with the data name uh, as my name. Okay, so now in the channel side, Django channel side, in, we'll cast the event. We'll first type the cast the event type. So if the event type is login, we'll get the name from the data and then we'll assign the my name to we assign the name to the my name. And remember, we'll join the group called the name. Okay, so whenever a user login as RAM, we'll add that user to the group called RAM. Okay, and so we can simply call for just for the demo purposes. We we'll propose we are doing so. Okay, and now now whenever RAM call to Sita, Sita or anybody, what will it do? Is it will Whenever we call, it will fire this call event. So in the call event, we'll call this be ready method. The be ready method will simply get the audio video from the browser and assign the local stream to the stream. And for the local video, there is a local video in the SCML. We set the uh, SRC object to the stream. Okay, then we'll create the connection and AD stream. As uh, whenever the user hit the call button, we are creating an offer. 
So create connection. Okay, the create connection and edit stream method will create the connection first, and it will simply create the RTC peer connection for peer in the peer connection. We will pass that peer connection configuration, and these are the stone and tone server. So what the stone server will do is it will give the application give the IP address of the current application in the public perspective uh, if the user can if the server cannot use that IP if the application is running behind the NAT or that kind of thing we have to relay on the tone server what the tone server will do is it will simply act as a relay server so whenever client A will send this data to the tone server and tone server will send back data to the client B okay if uh, most application will work uh, on the stern side so if it didn't work we, we have to depend on the relay server okay turn server that's the peer connection config and where are we oh, okay so once the connection has been established uh, we'll simply uh, add a stream uh, the, the these are the event handlers so if we are connection on ice candidate if the if the client find some candidate that can be used so it will call this handle ice candidate method on a stream so whenever the remote stream it has it this handle remote stream a is called and when the rem remote stream is removed the handle remote stream removed method is called okay so once the get ready method is completed once the get ready method is process uh, completed we will simply call that process call method now the process call method will create the offer and the offer will be the session descriptor so the peer connection will set the local descriptor as the created offer okay remember this the peer connection will set this offer as its local descriptor and will send this call even to the backend okay so with this offer uh, as a rtc message okay so this send this uh, send call master will send an event to the backend it will have the type call and the data okay remember this this is the offer okay so now the backend will get this event call and it will simply get the name of the user so who is calling based on this whom the user want to call okay we know that my name has the name of the user who want to call and in the data.name we know the user who he is trying to call okay let's for for the for the previous demo run is calling sita okay now in now what we need to do is we need to notify the sita the client B, that the somebody has called the user okay so here uh, in the name we have to send a message send a message to the name to the name that's the client b and the type will be call received and the data will be the caller <coughs> the uh, the data data will be the self that my name so that is the caller information and we'll send that rtc message okay we know this is the offer that's been generated okay so since this is passed to the uh, group so the group will get here so call receive as we know this call receive will be called on the client b so call is received by self dot my name uh, since this this function will be triggered on the uh, receiver side it will get that information and we have to send this information back to the front end so self dot send json the, the dump will simply send the type as call received and will send the uh, the entire data again okay? the rtc message as well as the caller information now in the front end side now uh, this front end side is for the receiver side okay in the receiver side they will get the call received event so in on so in the call receiver event we'll set the other user to the data.caller 
and you will save the remote RTC message to the data received from the RTC message. Okay, then we will display the button to answer the call. Okay, there is now there is the option to answer the call. And this will show that. So whenever the user hit the answer button in the client B side, okay, so receiver side will simply do the same. So we'll be ready that we need to get that audio video stream and we'll create the remote. Uh, a remote peer connection that kind of thing thing then once that's done will process to the asset okay so what the asset process will do it it will set the remote descriptor okay as as you know in the calling in the offer we have to set the we'll set our local descriptor we'll set the local descriptor as the offer but for since now the user who is receiving the call have the remote descriptor as well it will set the remote descriptor as the remote RTC message that's received from the offer and then we'll create an answer and we'll, this will create the session descriptor and in the in this side we'll set this descriptor as local descriptor now we can ignore this for now and then we'll send the answer call method okay so this will create the answer now, this will send the event back to the server so this is the call receiving side we have to notify the caller side that uh, we have accepted it so the caller socket will send the type as answer call the data now in the consumer side whenever we get the event type answer call will get the name of the caller so who was the caller so we, we have to notify the user that your call has been answered so we'll simply send a message to that group the name of the user and we'll send the event uh, call call answer okay since uh, this is the call to the group uh, now this call answer method will call in the first caller side so the users call has been accepted ramps calls has been accepted now this has to send the information to the front end so we will simply send that call answer has been received call has been answered we'll send the event with call with the type as call answer and data the data from the from the answer the user who have the who has called it okay have answered the call now in the called in this method okay where it is so on call is answer so we'll on call on call answer we'll set the remote rtc masses now this will be the remote rtc masses for the first caller and we'll set the remote descriptor as the rtc masses from the remote and now we'll simply display the calling okay will show the calling screen okay display non or display block okay we'll simply dis uh, display the calling is none so we'll, the, we'll hide the calling screen and we'll call the call process screen here we'll hide and show the show the video and show the other user and we'll so the user is in call screen okay now uh, as we had talked earlier here is a event called on IC candidate. What now? What will happen is each client will create an IC candidate. So candidate are the routes they have to decide which routes to to to, to create establish the connection. Okay. Now the um, whenever the client got the IC candidate, whenever a user client A or client B they got the connect the IC candidate, they have to send that information to the other user. Okay so send ice candidate method will be called whenever a user gets a candidate and the user on the message will be sent to the another user okay so for this case we'll have the another user and there is the rtc message okay this is the structure of the rtc method and the send ice candidate in the send ice candidate will simply trigger an event which have the type and ice candidate and the data okay and now in the back inside will get the ice candidate event as we know the user the other user is in the user information we'll simply we need to forward this to another user 
to get the user send the i scanned it event and for that user this method will be called and this method will simply pass this information back to the front end okay now the front end would get the ice candidate if the peer connection is added it will simply add to the peer connection uh, we can ignore this for now it will add the peer connection to add ice candidate okay whenever it can receive the ice candidate from the remote user it will simply add this ice candidate to its pool now they can decide which routes to call took and they, the connection has been established the data transfer will begin that's it and it may this may looks com, com, complex or uh, but i'll share the code and some whatever i have shared based on my explanation and looking through the code you understand the project so that's it if there's any confusion i'll like to I'll I'll try to help so in as we know we'll need some form of Eastern and Tone server there are lots of free Eastern server we need but we need to set up our own Eastern server if we have to use that I have the video on that as well I'll reference it here that's it have a good day thank you